Solar power from space is real. Caltech has proven this by powering an LED light on Earth from space as seen in these pictures from 2023. We've lit up a light bulb, but can we light up cities? It turns out there are many companies with plans to scale this up to compete with commercial scale nuclear and natural gas power plants. Brian Wong and Randy Kirk will talk about these plans. Scientific evaluation analysis inquiry confusion actually on my side of the desk. But mm. Brian Wong is here. This is I'm Randy Kirk and once a week, roughly, sometimes more often, we bring you uh, lots and lots of cool stuff that Brian had already put up on nextbigfuture.com, which you should be a part of and you should be subscribed to, just like you should be subscribed here. And if you haven't done that already, you know what to do. Um, and uh, But we've got a bunch of cool stuff ready to go. Brian, you got, got anything, uh, any uh, uh, thoughts uh, to warm us up, to tease us about what's coming? Um, yeah, so it's a lot of interesting things with um, space, um, AI, so the space science as well as um, space technology, and then there's also energy and, and a lot of um, interesting things, and a little bit of Tesla too. I worked some of that in. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let me um, bring this up, make sure I get the right one. Start with this. Okay. So, um, for space-based solar power, um, people may not know that, that that has been something that we've been working to try to achieve for, um, back in the 1970s, it was a, a, a wave, you know, after the Apollo of, um, of interest in space and how we're going to develop space, you know, things got delayed, um, but uh, now with the SpaceX Starship, I think uh, things can get back on track in terms of really developing space. So it was always a dream of um, getting solar power in space. And the reason being that on the ground, you're only generating a few hours of, of daylight and then you you don't have your power. But up, if you choose the right orbit up in space, um, you can get you know 12 or 24 hours of, um, of sunlight, which would mean that you wouldn't necessarily need need batteries and potentially it's a lot better uh in terms of cost the then there is a lot of solar power in space like people think of the space station with the big panels on there yeah which, but those only generate about like 200 kilowatts of power there's actually about uh, 40 to 50 megawatts of power on the various starlink satellites that are up there because there's so many of them um the 1.5 version satellites, which are smaller or earlier than that, and about seven kilowatt hours of power. Um, they kind of like unfold uh, just straight up. They, they're sent up flat like a Kia. Mm -hmm. And then there's newer, larger satellites, the Starlink minis, um, version two minis. Uh, they call minis, but they're actually bigger than the version 1.5. They're version two minis because they're intended for the Starship which is nine meters in diameter, which is like 30 feet in diameter versus about like 10 feet for the Falcon 9. Oh, I see. Yeah. So those would be potentially far, far bigger. And um, the minis are what they can fit inside the um, the Falcon 9s, but um, three to four times heavier. So um, there's many companies working on space-based solar. One of them is Virtus Solis, and they have just done a deal with um, Orbital Composites to launch a orbital uh, space power demo in 2027. Wow. But they have larger plans. And they also have reviewed um, all the other current concepts that they have. So the wireless power transmission uh, would basically come down similar to the communication bandwidth that we use for um, uh, cell phones, right? So we have... Um, radio transmissions at a particular wavelength that comes through the atmosphere. Right. And so you can use the same power. And the reason you might choose that is that um, we've already been doing it for a few decades now, sending things directly to cell phones. So 
it's kind of like let's do the same thing rather than choose something new which is like oh would that work would that be dangerous all that kind of stuff because like i'm just gonna do the same thing just in a wider area um so on the right here we see a diagram of what the um their modules will look like each one will be about like 1.65 meters or you know about the height of an average person uh -huh. and they'll have like twenty five thousand jammed into a uh starship which would then bring up like 10 megawatts of power five thousand of them right twenty five thousand of them that's right holy mackerel okay yeah and then they'll you know unpack and then they'll assemble themselves and then you can see on the ground comparing a field of radio receivers on the ground rectennas that compare in size to solar power because solar power is also very spread out so when they think, oh, I'm beaming down to something so big, it's it's you know miles across. Our solar power is already when wow. we build it at utility scale, really really big, and we're discussing some of that with what China is doing as well. So okay, so yeah, go ahead. So yeah, so uh, these are uh, you have this large array, mm -hmm. um, and it's and now is are the solar panels more efficient in space? I mean, are is the sun? more powerful in space? I mean, do you get more bang for the panel than you would on the on the ground? Yeah, you would get a bit more bang for the panel because um, it's about um, a, for, you know, for a square meter, you know, it's like more than a square yard, you get about a kilowatt of power up in space because you're not going through the atmosphere. Right. So if you come down the from the atmosphere, you lose about 40, you know, 6%. So you only have about 400 watts Got for it. the panel. Right. And um, yeah, so the, the panels themselves would have the same 20 ish to 30 percent efficiency um, okay. converting that power. OK, but then also the main difference, though, is, is the time time yeah. that instead of four hour ish getting good sunlight, you know, especially less if it's winter and cloudy. Right. Up there, it would be a consistent always 12. Nothing can get in your way. Right. Right. It's going to be. 12 hours, if it's shoot right over 12 hours, every time, 12 hours, 12 hours, you know, and then potentially 24, but then you may choose, these guys chose two 12 hour type orbits um, for, there's some technical reasons why they would choose to do that, uh, complicated, why, why that would be. And, and do you lose anything in the transmission to earth? Yes, you would. Yeah, there, there's efficiencies there, but if you do it right, you can keep it at about, um, high 90s percent efficiency so you wouldn't lose much you if you can choose the radio transmission power and then convert it to below yeah if you're sending, if you're sending light through then you'd have the same issue of the sunlight um you know getting degraded you know going through the atmosphere now on the experimental one that's going to go up in 2027 how big is this one going to be it they haven't said the size okay but it, it's probably um uh, tiny Okay. It's, it's, it's maybe ideally be one of the modules they plan to put up. Just one, right? Yeah. Right. But uh, so 1.65 outside of the person, but um, you could, they could choose not to do that. There has been one demonstration by a university, Caltech, where they did beam down some power just enough to light up one really tiny LED. Okay. So, so it has been done. These guys have various groups are doing it, like Japan, Europe uh, have done it where they've you know, gone over a few kilometers on the ground and then lit the puff. So, so now they're, if you're going from low Earth orbit, you're looking at 300 miles or so. And the beam, so, and, the, and, and for, for the, uh, you know, science fiction nuts, the beam that comes down, if it was a gigawatt or something of power that was being beamed down, would mm -hmm. it be a, how, how wide would the beam be? Would it be a large? Um, yeah. So, so that's the, the, the size here you're seeing the, the, in the middle, bottom middle picture. You're show, it's looking like it's about a, a few miles across. The beam would be a few miles across. Or the beam would be a few miles across. Yeah. Wow. If, 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 but particularly if I'm doing some, if I'm doing a large array of stuff because it just it just spreads out. Yeah. Right. So um, you know, just like um, you know, when you're looking at Starlink, they have the receiving areas yeah. and stuff. It, it's it can be miles across, and then you're getting a little bit of um, a large section of a radio beam to get your signal. Um, it's like um, when I'm, you know, if anyone's had a Sally TV, you're pointing your dish at it, right? And you and a million other people potentially are getting the same beam. Right. 
because it's spread out. Okay. You, you would have to do something special to try and um, reduce how much spread you have. Got it. Okay. All right. So this is the, the, the image for the demo, which may or may not look like this. Again, it's the one module that they're looking to put up in 2027. Ultimately, would, they would want to build these things into these, you know, massive uh, collection of these um, of these um, uh, collectors. Uh, there's other um, designs for this. Um, a European group uh, designed this thing. Um, again, the shape of it, you know, their engineers are looking at um, various um, complex things up in orbit to determine the shape. For us, it just looks cool. Right until they make it, you know, whatever it'll, it'll end up, they imagine it'll look like, and then they have ones that are more flat and, and simple. This is a NASA version of um, making things flat and scaling it. But the big, main thing is, think the big on the ground, think the big thing in space. If you're gonna do it, you need some level of scale and size to make this thing practical. Right. Um, and then there's another European Space Agency design for these things, and then they compared this in a paper showing you know all kinds of factors I mean, there's down about five six lines they talk about total weight of it so twenty one thousand tons for the nasa boeing from 1980 and then the more recent ones 22 23 24 you're in the two thousand tons six thousand ten thousand ton range their smallest practical scale demo is to get 200 megawatts and have that be 732 tons which Maybe you could launch in six Starship payloads or five Starship payloads. And then um, with if the 100 or 120 launches, you can get their big system with 8,000 tons for um, eight gigawatts or something like that. Um, and then they discuss the wireless transmission frequencies and and um, all the, the factors around efficiency and stuff. Got it. And then they have... Uh, the cost. So they believe their design, the big one, eight gigawatts, the far right, they think they can get the cost down to about $25 per um, megawatt hour, which would make them cheaper than coal and um, natural gas. Wow. Uh, um, so yeah. On the order of, uh, of a uh, regular solar slash battery installation. Right, right. Um, and we're going to discuss the solar and battery installations uh, uh, next to okay. give the, the context related to that. Um, also, before we get to that, there's also something where instead of same solar panels, you can send up just mirrors. Okay. And can reflect that. So some people were working on that where you'd have an array of reflectors. So if I'm just reflecting light, I'm not concentrating it in mm -hmm. any way, like to try to increase the intensity. Then it's that thing we discussed, you're just, you know, redirecting sunlight. So then if I have, if you looked at the earth, you'd see, you know, the shadow of the moon or whatever, or the, 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 the rotation away from the sun. And then you would, uh, you know, go into nighttime darkness, right? So if you had solar panels, uh, sorry, um, mirrors reflecting it in orbit, you could, if you go kind of go around the earth and you can then kind of like beam it over where it's, it's nighttime and I could give you sunlight. So then we have these huge multi-mile um, solar farms, especially in China. Right. And then you could light it up at nighttime. So oh. um, a couple of hours. So instead of being from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. With, with good sunlight, I could then extend it out to 8 a.m. to to 6 or 7 p.m. So, you know, I could and move, open my window so that That's the all these huge solar farms uh, would work. Um, and then there's been several papers and one recently discussing that where you're, they're saying if we have 20 different massive sets of mirrors, again, a bunch of modules together, mm -hmm. directing it down, then we could in series light up. You know, if I had a band of, of solar power on the ground, I could then, um, direct sunlight to places and increase it over over time um because it's kind of diffuse because i'm losing sunlight as i'm going through the atmosphere yeah then um by having several it's like okay i can stack up three or four to get that extra hour really really good sunlight nice. so yeah so, so there's that china has 
looked pretty seriously at this. A city called Chengdu was looking to create a uh, constant full moon. So huh. it would be like um, three or four times the, the light, the power of full moon reflecting off the sunlight. Um, the reason for that would be then they wouldn't need um, nighttime streetlights, uh, you know, to, to, to light the city. So they right. could save electricity right. from that. Um, but then you are, you would do something where animals, other things, what's the effect of oh, yeah. cost, constant moonlight, you know, but it's something that they have, you know, China thinks big engineering. So they, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so they're considering this. Okay. So about the context of it. So we discussed that. So uh, China has about 418 terawatt hours of, of uh, solar power in 2022. So two years ago, some of these things, it takes time to get proper numbers to come up. A 21% increase from before. That was off of 392 gigawatts of installed solar at the end of 2022. Okay. So China's building all their solar quickly, they build all their energy quickly. And um, so they're getting less out of their solar panels. So I think part of it is that if they added, you know, 80 gig gigawatt hours of the 392, they may have got it all turned off. It's installed, but not really active yet. Right, right. Not, not producing yet. The U.S. gets about like two, you know, 204 terawatts out of 110 gigawatts of 2022. So they were getting two gigawatt uh, um, hours, you know, like kil kilowatt hours versus one kilowatt installed, right? right. Versus China just getting over one. So China's only about like half as efficient for their right. solar, right? So there's um, several factors to that. One would be, I think that one, they have pollution. So if you have pollution, dust stuff, then I think you, you leave about 10%, right? And then if you, they're putting it in the desert where it's like, okay, this land is cheap. I'm going to stick it into the Gobi Desert and I can just build as much as I want, right? But if you have temperatures above, you know, like uh, 36 degrees Celsius or something like that, you know, above like 100 Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. then the solar panels uh, start don't work as well. You'd have to cool them in order to, so they lose about 23% there, right? And then that cheap land, you know, all the desert, so much sun, like that, it's actually kind of like not the best place to put it if you were to to pick where to to take something. Um, but you can look at the various maps about how that doesn't work out. So the the fast build out as well as the suboptimal places just where I can do it cheap, you know, economically, I, the land is cheap, Building it there is cheap just because like no one's there. I'm just going to build huge, huge amounts of this uh, solar power and wind power. But uh, China's solar modules, and they make uh, clothing in 80% of all solar modules right. on, on the world. Because they said, uh, you know, the companies as well as the government support said, we want to own this industry. Right. We will make massive gigafactories of solar. And then we will lose money because we're going to have a glut of these solar panels. Right, right. But then no one else can compete. I'm going to get 80% of the market. Right. Right. And they've, they've done that. And also for them at wholesale prices, it's about 15 cent per watt or $150 per kilowatt hour. So if I make a gigawatt of it, it's only 150 million bucks versus um, about 400 million bucks in the United States because wow. because the US is at 40 cents at the per watt at the wholesale level. Right. Um, and then it's solar is also like three dollars per watt when you try to stick it on top of your home. I see. Right. Because it's a smaller thing. I got like if someone got on my roof, it's not right. the same as just laying them out right, right to a massive field or desert. Right. Um, but it's it's super duper cheap. Yeah. So the and the um cost of this thing is kind of a problem for the space-based solar guys, right? Um, so space-based solar guys will have to choose small areas, um, niches where, you know, like it's more expensive on Hawaii sure. or sure. on um, some other island that has, you know, have to ship in everything or, and also on military bases, US uh -huh. military bases. So they will start there, but I... the, the general okay, we're going to dominate and then change the world's economic mix on these things. The solar and battery stuff, as we, you know, Tesla people know, you know, the, the 
the battery storage, the solar, keeping it cheaper and cheaper, and then the labor component. Yeah. You know, which is like two thirds of the cost. That That's could end up going away with various forms of automation, possibly Tesla bought. Right. Right. And and why in the heck isn't India doing this? Uh, why isn't Indonesia doing this? I mean, it's just uh, these are extremely sunny uh, parts of the globe. Why wouldn't they be building millions of these modules as well? They are building a lot of solar, but it, it just China's industrial scale is just ahead. You know, they're the factory to the world and have been right. for several decades. Right. So it's, you know, how are you going to outcompete China and building something that they want to build? Well, no, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying uh, India, installing solar, they, they are installing solar. They're installing they it, but, but, but they don't want to buy from, obviously, India doesn't like to buy from China. So it would seem I, like- I think on solar panel, you don't have much choice. It's they like, don't have a choice. Know, got it. I got it. They're just, well, you can get like 20%. You, you can get from some of the places. so much cheaper. Yeah. Right. So much cheaper that, you know, it, it doesn't make sense. You know, right. like 80%. You know, yeah. there is 20% elsewhere, you know, some in, in yeah. Europe, some yeah. in Japan, you know, you can, you can get it, but you can pay more. Right. Yeah. Got it. Um, and then China will reach about a terawatt hour of solar by 2025 installed, which will give them about 1,100 terawatt hours per year of solar based on the current statistics. That 1,100 terawatt hours per year. The U.S. has 100 gigawatt hours, just slightly under 100 gigawatt hours of nuclear power. Okay. Right? They The U.S. gets about 800 terawatt hours. So it almost as, more than, than China gets now from all of their... Solar. So the gigawatts versus gigawatt hours is completely different because the nuclear reactors run all the time. Right. And the solar doesn't. Right. Right. And then you can help make it better with the, the batteries and stuff. China is at about 9,360 terawatt hours in 2023 for total power. Right. The vast majority of it is coal. Um, but that is um, more than double. United States. The United States is about like 4,200, right? 4,100 terawatt hours. So they're more than double. 80 to be double. All of Europe is less than all the United States at about like 2,500, 3,000 terawatt hours. And then China's adding another uh, 300, 400 terawatt hours every year. Um, a lot of it is the solar and wind. Yeah. Um, there was a video which you shared to me of them discussing some. 16 gigawatt uh, facility in Kung King or something like that. Uh, maybe I have that the next one. No. Um, and and they so they're building these large large zones and then stacking them up. But it's again it's it's because they have cheap solar panels. Yeah. Cheap land. Cheap, uh, cheap labor. Cheap labor. <laughs> and it's like dump it out there. It's still again not that huge. It's giving them maybe 10 percent of what they'll ha they'll need overall in 2025 so even with all that massive build up uh -huh. it's still only 10 percent so that and they're adding 300 so it's like to get ahead of everything that, that they're building in general is a difficult thing Got looking it. at this closely is that there's two hours of storage for each megawatt of solar and wind energy so when you say okay china gets like 1000 um kilowatt hours out of like um 1000 kilowatts of, of installed um power right. right like roughly that one to one and that means in a day they're getting maybe three kilowatt hours for one kilowatt on average yeah right versus five or six for the united states Got it. so that means that if i have two hours of battery storage <clears throat> if i generate three i'm using one as i'm generating but two, I store. Right. So that goes to why is a two-hour megapack make sense for solar and wind? Got it. Right. A four-hour megapack actually kind of makes sense for um, for wind power because again, it's a bit more consistent. Huh? Um, and then um, the um, let's see, yeah. So so that that's the sizing the megapack, the hours uh, matches what solar and wind are are producing, Got and it. that's seen by various. Um, projects. So then you can also say that if you have a terawatt hour of solar, then if I have roughly four megawatt hours in the mega pack, yeah. right, then I would need about 200,000, 250,000 mega packs, two hour mega packs to, or 500,000, so 500,000 mega packs to, to, to balance that off. Wow. And, and China would have like a terawatt hour solar, 
a terawatt, sorry, a terawatt solar, a terawatt of, of wind, and then the world would be roughly double that, right? Yeah. So then you would need, you know, completely say, you know, four million megapacks to completely <laughs> battery storage up the entire oh, production. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you may not choose to do that. But that's yes, 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 yes. Ballparking what you need to do. Right. This is one of the mirror things on that. Um, another one developed a mirror thing for for reflecting in orbit. And then here, because we the key thing is is the Starship to make this low cost. Right. Here, the picture that SpaceX shared of three completed boosters. That's the three in the center. Okay. And then you have the other two on the side are ha two halves of the fourth one. So they're about to stick that together and have four completed uh, boosters. Right. Yeah. So they're making them one every four months, roughly one every three months. Um, so like one of them started about a year and a half ago, but now they're starting to increase the pace mm -hmm. of these things. And again, they just look great. Yeah. And then you have the the four upper stages of the Starship. Right. Again, they have again. Again, they showed the three. Um, in the point, they just roll them out and said, "Here's our four Starship, and here's our three boosters and stuff like that." <laughs> So then they've already had on the Falcon 9 lower stage a booster used um, almost 20 times each. And they go to 40, 50, 100 times. Wow. If they do the Starship at that level, then you can see, okay, if I use it once, it may be this price, but then it becomes, you know, um, 10 times cheaper by the time I use it about uh, 25 to 50 times. The wow. cost just keeps dropping as I use, reuse them over and over again. Um, uh, some other news is that uh, the Department of Defense wants to own and operate SpaceX Starships. Right. So that's not all of them. It's no. basically they're saying that they want to first lease them and say, okay, they want to have their own launch tower. They want to have their own military crews because they have some like secret mission. Right. So they don't want SpaceX people knowing what they're putting up. Right. So they want to... Uh, take control of it and say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm not just renting a ride. I'm gonna have to take an Uber. I want to swap out the driver, swap out the the maintenance crew, and then take over that thing. So right. they lease it, and then they return it if it survived whatever they did to it. Um, but then the other thing they're negotiating is that they would buy some. Right. right. And the U.S. has about um, military has about like one third to one quarter of the. Um, cargo planes in the world okay so regular cargo planes they have about a quarter right of it so you can see that in the future maybe they have a quarter of all um starships because you then choose to have um, a space um force just like they have a um, cargo plane force right uh, so we'll see how that negotiation plays out i'm expecting that to be you know potentially billions of dollars for each one that they do because they, they've already given SpaceX like 150 million dollars in two grants to demonstrate one off, um, go point to point on Earth, yeah, with the point Starship. To, the, point to, the point to point thing is one of the most fascinating things for me, and I think the least talked about is that mm -hmm. people ultimately will be setting up space stations, probably, I guess, off of major cities out in the water where, where they're where right. they're space bases, right? Space bases with, and, yeah, and, and launch towers everywhere. They they got mass produced launch towers. You know, but I think they're it. also I think the army wants to wants them to prove that they could land it in a field. <laughs> right. <laughs> so right. this of course. Uh, would so be then you have to have the 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 landing legs and big yes. flat um, right. um, um, discs or something like that right. to to compress the land, and then you'd have land with enough fuel so it could take off again. Right. Because right. just you don't want to move it any other way than it flying by itself. Right. Um, yeah. So, and that would then go towards when I have my lunar starship or oh, yes. Mars starship. I need to land oh, yeah. yes. on, on the on the surface and then take off again. Oh, yeah. um, but even there, you'd want to um, you want to try and reinforce the ground because we have that the rock tornado thing. Yes. Where if you have a the full engine taking off, then you destroy what's below and then you throw up huge right. boulders right. which can damage the engines right. um so if you're choose, if the military choose to land someplace the significant chance that they didn't do something to improve the landing field right they would not be able to take off again uh safely right it's not like some kind of like um commander thing just because of the the force of the engines 
right? Um, that it would, um, it, you know, create create a huge problem where, where you would damage, uh, likely destroy the rocket. Not to mention what it might do to the Martians. Right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And the other thing that uh, Elon has mentioned that he that SpaceX is working on putting a telescope just inside the, the SpaceX Starship, and because it'd be eight meters around, it'd be roughly getting close to double the mirror area of the James Webb telescope. Wow. Um, the, the Hubble is about 2.4 meters uh, wide. The um, uh, James Webb about six, five, six meters wide, and this would be eight meters wide. So then it would be bigger than that. And you can potentially mass produce them again, because the booster could end up, you know, being, you know, 30 million bucks, the upper stage. Right. Right. might be 10 million bucks something like that you can really drive the cost down um for that wow okay so we'll now transition over to other uh some other space new not uh, spacex related per se so um the mars express orbiter um put up by the european space agency um has um gone over again the equator of mars and it detected about 300 meters below the surface um large thick deposits of uh, water ice about three to seven three to four kilometers thick so three thousand four thousand meters thick so the amount they discovered is roughly and just just at the equator um roughly the amount of um, water in the red sea which is about like five hundred thousand um square kilometers of, of of water it's a huge amount it's about like one third as much as is in the that they believe is in the uh, north pole of the mars mm -hmm. so that means you could have a massive base and just have on the equator and then just dig down 300 meters and then you got water ice as much as you would need for any kind of colony got it do we know if it's salt water or <laughs> um pretty much uh, i think um um Ice when freezes up would be um, fresh water. Fresh I think the the, the it was, I think ice would separate out from the salt, usually. Um, yeah. So, but again, we don't know much about it. And again, it's, it's okay. still indirect evidence. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, and we'll see you guys next time.